FOMC summary and takeaways. Hi, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Insights brought to you by Ainsley Bullion and the Gold and Silver Standard. Today, we welcome back Sam, who's been looking at the minutes from the meeting that we had recently in the US around interest rates and everything that they had to say and, and sort of what implications that might have for, for us and for the markets. So welcome back, Sam. How are you going? Good. Thanks, Chris. How are you? Yeah, really good. Um, looking at that today, you had a lot of um, really good points in there. You really broke it down, what what they were actually saying. Can you maybe start off by giving us some of those main points that you highlighted in the article from the meeting minutes? Sure. And of course, it's always fun here in Australia to wake up at four in the morning and uh, go through these, these meeting minutes from America. But one thing that they highlighted was that uh, they agreed that inflation was unacceptably high. And that the data, for example, the May CPI data showed that inflation was slowing less than expected. The second thing they highlighted was that almost all the participants noted that uh, they, they judged additional increases in the target federal funds rate mm -hmm. uh, would, would be appropriate for 2023. So they're all looking for interest rate hikes, apparently. And uh, one of the notes that was highlighted, especially towards the end of the meeting minutes, was that U.S. banking system is sound and resilient. So they tried to highlight that many times. There's nothing wrong uh, with the banks. It, uh, the economy's fine and we're okay to hike more. So those were the main points. They, they definitely like to keep um, harping on that that point about everything's fine, it's okay to do it. I really struggle a little bit with um, their backwards looking data in, in those minutes because when I still look at uh, the stuff I'm looking at that's really more real-time data still has inflation printing new lows after lows. So maybe not fast enough, but certainly pointing in a downward direction, but they're still holding on to this narrative that that inflation is still too high. But how, how did the markets react so far from, from what they had to say? There were slight dips. Um, and then shortly afterward, it, it even looked, things looked a bit bullish, you know, for the stock market, but it, it just kind of balanced out. So there was, as with any FOMC meeting minutes release, there's a bit of a bit of swing in both directions sometimes, if it's a little bit indifferent. And in this case, it was. And that could be because it was very strongly worded. It was all mm. about, we are going to raise, we all agree we're going to raise, don't even think we're not going to raise rates. And here are all the reasons why we can raise rates, but the mar markets might just be calling their bluff. Yep. Uh, or traders could just be waiting for the non-farm payroll data. In other words, the jobs data coming out of the U.S. Friday to confirm this. But in any case, um, if it's just traders calling their bluff, they have reason to, because even our central bank, other central banks, they were talking about no rate hikes. Like the RBA said, um, in 2021, remember, they said, we're going to have no rate hikes till 2024. Hmm. Well, it's 2023. Uh, <laughs> we're, we're six months away from 2024. And not only have we hiked, but we're potentially almost done hiking. Here we are arguing about whether there is going to be one last hike or not, or two last hikes or not. And um, that's their statement from a couple of years ago. So if traders are um, struggling to believe Fed meeting minutes and Fed statements, well, you can't blame them. And that's, that's such an important point. The, the credibility is really quite shot. And the example you just gave, you know, no no rate hikes till 24. The, when the credibility is that shot, maybe that means they just have to come out with stronger and stronger words each time to get any semblance of um, pe people believing them, I suppose, because it, it it's hard work. Like if, if you it's reasonable to not believe them when you've been fooled so many times. I've, well, yeah. Trump used to do that. He tried to uh, swing the oil market. Who knows if he if he was putting trades on or if he had um, Jared putting trades on mm. in the background or what, but he used to tweet about the oil market. I think oil should be higher. I think oil should be lower, as blatant as that. And then what happened is it started to erode the strength because people got sick of being liquidated by these at, um, tweets or these announcements yeah. that would end up going the opposite way maybe a day later. So uh, everyone has credibility and it does erode. Yeah, and that, that's the risk they run, I suppose, if they continue down this path at some point, they lose it entirely. But they reference um, specifically in that data uh, or in those minutes today, um, GDP and economic strength. So you've talked about that saying, you know, they keep saying it's strong, it's strong, it's strong. Does it? Do you think they're actually providing a fair assessment there? 
Um, yeah, look, it is strong. I mean, GDPs are generally in in the first world countries are generally strong, but compared to what? So yep. people who look at these announcements are mostly investors and traders. And what are most people invested in? They're mostly invested in the stock market. That's their retirement fund in there. That's their livelihood in there. And compared to compared to what, really, if you look at the Warren Buffett indicator, so this is the essentially the U.S. stock market's total value divided by uh, the U.S. GDP. You can see that it's currently around 177 percent. Now, what that means is that uh, the, the stock market's overvalued and sitting 47.99 percent above its trend line historically. Right. So compared to what is I ask is. It's strong, but what's the reason people are looking at these statements? People are looking not just because it's really, really interesting to read pages of what central bankers talk about, but because it could impact their investments. And if you put it into perspective, the, the stock market, just according to the Warren Buffett indicator, which is very, very plain, it is about GDP. Uh, everything still looks overvalued. And and I do I definitely agree um, with that analysis. The only problem I have is sometimes now when you talk about Fed credibility, it's also credibility with some of these numbers um, when they keep changing the metrics that underlie. Probably not so much GDP, but certainly inflation. That was kind of the point I was making before. When some of the metrics that build up these numbers keep keep changing, you don't actually know how reliable those indicators are anymore potentially. Well, I suppose that Warren Buffett one has been reliable for a long time, hasn't it? Yes, the CPI, for example, they're using May CPI. We all know CPI will just keep changing to keep inflation uh, as low as we want it. Um, for example, banks will put anything in their basket of goods to make it lower. India's central bank was using VCRs, the cost of a VCR. <laughs> now, I, I don't know how many people are still buying VCRs, but I'm pretty sure that's going to... Um, keep the, the cost of goods looking very, very low. Absolutely. Well, sometimes, though, those things become the vintage ones that end up costing more. Don't quite know how that works, but anyway, that seems to be where we are. Just um, mix up the basket again and uh, go to yeah, DVD pick, pick something else, yeah. <laughs> so let's sort of bring that to all together. What do you think traders and investors could take away from those meeting minutes? Where does this sort of leave us? looking at it, should we should we be giving it credibility? Do we doubt some of those figures? What what bigger picture should we be taking away from this? Well, just, just taking all these statements and putting it all together with their past statements and how things look in the markets. One of the things uh, you might notice uh, reading it is that the, the staff claim to be unsure if past interest rate hikes have actually finished having an effect or if they're still going to have an effect, I think it's pretty clear that there's a ripple effect. You know, you don't hike interest rates and then one month later, the damage is done. It's all, it's all finished. Things yep. can fall over like dominoes, but they're claiming to not know if the past interest rate hikes are still having an effect or not. And they seem unsure of how much more to hike. That's yet. They reference all this data. It's kind of like saying, uh, the glass ceiling is uh, this thick and it's uh, this wide and it's this long and here's how long it took to, to make. But we don't know where it is, so we're just going to keep jumping until we break our neck on it. Well, it, it doesn't that doesn't give much weight to all the data then, does it? It's, it's essentially any number times zero is zero. So it looks like the strategy they're doing is uh, we're not sure if we've pushed it too far or not. So let's just keep pushing until maybe something something breaks or mm. until we can see something broken. And that that's always been the sort of statement, isn't it? They keep going until they break something. They look for the evidence of that breaking. But I suppose what we need to worry about, if if, this, if that's the right terminology, is um, it take, takes a long time because you just highlighted there's a lot of lag in this actually working. You don't change the interest rate and then one month later everything is, has changed in the world. Uh, it takes time. And the flips, the other side of that is when you finish that process, the effects still last for a long time. So it takes a long time to unwind that if you've gone too far. It's it's a precarious situation, isn't it? Yeah, and as we talked before, they could study their own history. The crash usually comes after the pivot. So they, they kind of find yes. out that they've broken something and try to swing around the other way. Uh, the second thing is, 
it looks like the um, according to them, GDP and employment will become worse. Okay, this is according to them in the FOMC minutes, yet they almost mm. unanimously agree on tighter policy. So they're saying, hey, things are going to get worse. Let's hike anyway. Um, what is that based on? Is that, yeah. is that yeah. based on things are okay now, so we'll hike now? Because all these things are lagging, aren't they? So if they see things uh, getting worse, they're still trying to fight I inflation. And then the last one is um, investors have been challenging uh, not just the Fed's uh, actions, but their statements. I mean, mm. if the Fed hikes or the Fed does something, it's not like people challenge that. You don't fight the Fed, right? Yeah. But people are starting to challenge their their statements. For example, they're you know they're they're pausing now, and they're saying they're going to to hike, and it looks like the markets might be trying to call their bluff already. Whether that's a good idea or whether that'll end up in a double dip recession, like we we talked about mm. um, before, but the past statements, you know, no rate hikes till twenty twenty four, or you know, inflation is transitory, or go to the grocery store. Um, it's, it's the only transition it's made is it's it, things have gone up, um, unless you look at carefully constructed CPI reports. But those are the the three take takeaways that that i got from it that's fantastic thank you sam for all of that like it really does um give us a framework to look at it through and points out some of the subtleties of where we need to be paying more attention and probably some of those bits where maybe we need to be starting to ignore or look through what the fed's actually saying so appreciate all of that work on that today thank you thanks chris Thanks everyone for watching. Remember, if you have any questions or comments for Sam or myself or anyone on the team, reach out on the social platforms and we'll get back to you with those as soon as we can. That's us for this week. Um, we'll be back next week on Tuesday, probably with Alex to discuss all things markets and metals. Until then, have a great weekend, everyone.